Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome back to another Fallout 76 Weapon Spotlight where today we're going to take a look at a pretty cool weapon. We've got a quad double barrel shotgun. This one is a three star variant. It's also got bashing damage and it's got a VATS critical meter that fills a little faster too. But uh, those effects aren't, they're just not really going to impact us very much. So for all intents and purposes, we're focusing on the quad effect here today. And as always, if you like videos like this and you want to see more, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. There's always a lot more to come on the channel. And the way I do these videos, we start out with a look at the weapon and the build, and then we get into the actual testing. So uh, what I always do here is uh, put in timestamps so those of you who are interested in seeing the details of the build can do that. Those of you who just want to skip ahead straight into the action, you can go ahead and do that too. Without further ado, let's take a look at the weapon. So what we've got here is a quad tactical double barrel shotgun. So uh, normally in your double barrel, you've got two shots that can fire as fast as you can pull the trigger and then uh, it breaks open and you reload those. With the quad, you just uh, somehow magically load eight in there. So uh, we've got a lot of firepower real quick without needing to reload nearly as often. Our Vance critical meter is going to fill a little bit faster, which maybe we get a little something out of that, but it's honestly not going to be all, all that effective today. And bashing damage, of course, is completely and utterly useless in every way. As for mods, I did do something a little different here today. I went for the refined receiver instead of the hardened receiver. The hardened receiver would give us a little bit more damage, but the refined receiver gives us better range and accuracy. And I think that's a big factor. The reason for that is because range affects your damage. So if your range isn't good, and your accuracy isn't good, then you actually do less damage over that range. So that was my thinking there. We've got the true long barrel again for better accuracy and range. True stock for better accuracy and range. We've got a reflex sight so we get uh, less VATS AP cost. And there's no muzzle on this because uh, even though they might tighten things up a little bit or cut down on recoil, they're also going to reduce our range. So no need to do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at mutations. So this is uh, the secondary build on my normal bloodied stealth commando character, so let's bear that in mind. But uh, honestly, I think I'd probably take the same mutations. Adrenal reaction for more damage at low health. Bird bones and marsupial so we can jump high and land softly. Carnivore so we get double effects out of meat. Chameleon, which uh, I'm just convinced is completely useless in every way. Eagle eyes for better critical damage and more perception. Egghead for more intelligence, which means more XP. Healing factor, so we automatically heal up between fights. Scaly skin for some extra damage and energy resistance. Speed demon, so we move and reload faster. And this character also has talons, which is not going to be a factor today. And uh, before I recorded this, I did forget to swap out my Clash Freak perk, so the negatives are showing up there. But that is running. It's a visual bug only. Now let's go ahead and take a look at legendary perks. So remember that you can't swap out your legendary perks when you swap your special build on your character. So we do kind of have to live with what we have to live with here. We've got ammo factory so I can make more ammo and need to spend less time grinding for materials. We've got intelligence, which eventually will give me uh, enough intelligence to run gunsmith and demolition expert at the same time on this character. We're not quite there yet, so there's some placeholder perks in there for now, but uh, gets the job done. Legendary Charisma gives us more Charisma perks, but remember when you do it this way, it does not allow you to share a stronger perk. So I do not recommend using the Legendary Charisma perk. I'm just invested in it at this point, and it's going to be a while until I can get uninvested in it. After that, we've got Follow Through, which normally is very effective for my stealth characters, but uh, in this case, we're going to go in fast and loud today, so that's not really doing a whole lot for us. Uh, really, honestly, it's doing absolutely nothing for us today, but uh, it's there, so we live with it. Finally, we have Endurance and Luck. I've got uh, two points in Endurance, mainly so I can take Revenant, so if I get revived during a fight, I'll do some extra damage. And Legendary Luck lets, lets me take more VATS critical related perks. Now that we're through all that, let's go ahead and take a look at the special build itself. This is actually exactly the same special build that I ran 
in last week's Executioner's Combat Shotgun video. Uh, realistically, what I would do here is probably change out a few things, but uh, I didn't really have other things to swap in there because I burned up all my perk coins and all that stuff, so I just don't have a lot to work with. So what we have today, as imperfect as it may be, under strength, we've got uh, all the shotgunner perks maxed out. We've got scatter shot, which is going to make our reload faster, and that is helpful today. Uh, and it reduces the weight of shotguns. Bandolier to reduce the weight of ammo. Perception at six. We've got skeet shooter maxed out. That's going to tighten up our uh, spread and give us better accuracy over range. Concentrated fire maxed out at three, so we can target weak points more effectively. Endurance at three. Uh, Radical, which is going to give me more strength at low health. And today, we are going to run this at low health, even though it's not a bloodied weapon, just to try and get as much damage as possible out of it, because we don't have stealth to rely on today. Revenant gives us more damage if we get revived during a fight, but we're going solo today, so that's not really doing anything for us. Charisma at five, we've got Lone Wanderer maxed out to uh, increase AP regen and help avoid some damage. Strange in Numbers is there because, well, it's just kind of there. It's a placeholder at this point because I didn't have anything else to put there. Intelligence at 10. Uh, eventually will be Gunsmith and Demolition Expert along with Nerd Rage and Scrapper. But for now, uh, we've got batteries included in there because why not? Uh, there's Might as well put something in there. Might as well be useful. Nerd Rage is going to give us more damage at low health as well as better AP regen and some more damage resistance. Gunsmith at 5 is going to help the, with uh, weapon condition. Agility is at 15. We've got uh, the sneak perks that are on here. These are the things that I would probably change uh, if I had that option at the drop of a hat. Unfortunately, we don't really have that anymore because now we turn in all of our garbage perk cards for perk coins. So uh, not a lot of extras to work with there on a week to week basis. But uh, we've got covert operative and in, we've got covert operative, sneak and escape artist. Uh, we're not going to be sneaking today, so those are effectively useless. But Enforcer is going to help us cripple limbs and get staggers. Gunfu is going to automatically swap between targets for some extra damage. And Adrenaline will give us a nice damage boost as we take on bigger and bigger mobs. Under Luck, we've got that maxed out as well. There, I've got uh, Class Freak and Starch Jeans, so I can keep my mutations and reduce their negative effects. Serendipity to help avoid damage at low health. Bloody Mess for extra damage, Quick Hands for a chance at an automatic reload, and then we've got uh, Psychopath and Four Leaf Clover there to increase our chances at getting a critical shot. So now that we've been through all of that, let's go ahead over to the White Spring and see how we can do with this thing. All right, let's make our way inside and not going to be sneaking today. We'll see how we do. Uh, okay, good, nice, tight hip fire accuracy. And so far, so good. Once I kind of get used to it here, you can really double tap effectively, which is great. Reload is still pretty quick, but not perfect. But that's the great thing about having the quad version of this weapon is you don't have to reload every time you double tap a target. So I can uh, hip fire like that pretty quickly, but I can also use VATS, whatever I happen to choose. And hip fire is nice and accurate with this. Unfortunately, I'm not entirely nice and accurate with it. But so far, so good. There, we got a one shot. Okay. All right. And another one. So as adrenaline builds up, we can definitely see, uh, see that damage boost in action. And a quick reload, and you're dead. So, yeah. This is definitely a weapon for somebody who likes to... Uh, who likes to move fast. If you like to come in and move fast and just kill things and move, then this is the weapon for you. This is uh, as close as you're going to get to a Doom shotgun in Fallout 76. Maybe if you added the explosive effect to it, you could do a little more, but uh, so far we're doing all right. All right, now this is my room of death. Let's see if I get murdered in here. I've got to be careful. I always get killed in here. Whenever I'm with a loud weapon that I'm not familiar with, that's always where I get killed. Let's get out of there. All right, and I think I made it. I think I'm safe. Good to go. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, almost. I got out of the room and everything, but I still died inside it. All right, let's get back to it here. And are you the one that killed me? Yes, you are. Well, now you're dead. See how you like it. Do you like death? I hope so because you can't take it back. I can, but you can't. And 
then quick double taps in that do the trick. Probably didn't even need the second one there. And it helps if the hits register. Come on, Vats. Do what we need to do here. All right, let's head on back here. Now, here's where it's going to get interesting. Cripple the legs. Double tap you. Maybe going low health here was a mistake. I definitely get a little more damage out of being low health, but I'm also at more risk. Well, Vats the head. Easy enough. Looks clear inside here. How about a rad roach? Yeah. Nice double barrel shotgun to the roach. How's that for an exterminator's effect? All right, what do we have going on outside? Doesn't look like anybody came running in. And one shot to the head. So we've got decent accuracy here, so we can do headshots. And yeah, so my early impressions on this are it's a lot of fun. Uh, it really is. Let's go to the deep. And here we are on the catwalk to Kami land waiting for the liberators to come and uh, come and indoctrinate us. All right. Double taps do the trick. You're a little far away. Do a quick heal. And we've got a legendary soldier down there. So far, we've definitely got shots coming our way, but we're doing all right. All of our little damage avoidance perks are definitely helping. One shot to the head. Unfortunately, you didn't drop me anything good. Okay, another shot to the head. Let's see how we do with you. And yeah, we can do a little uh, marsupial vats jumping there. This weapon is a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. It, I don't... It, is my build perfect? No. You know, whatever. There's any number of things that I may be doing wrong here, but I'm having fun with it. I'm so used to being sneaky and stealthy all the time that uh, having the opportunity to just run in, jump around, do things like this is pretty cool. The, uh, the audio is great on the weapon. It sounds fantastic. It feels fantastic to use it. And there's our missile sniper. But not anymore. But you're legendary, so let's go ahead and loot you. We'll just leave your garbage missiles on the ground. Let's head back downstairs. We'll get uh, the two behind here. We should have one regular soldier. And nothing a little Vats action can't do. That uh, double tap action is really effective. It's uh, It really does fire as fast as you can pull the trigger, though. So you kind of have to have a little bit of trigger discipline because it's really easy to double tap that trigger even when you don't need to. So lining up on the head. You know, if we get close, we're doing well here. Just get right in here, use vats on that head, and watch the blood spatter. All right, we got a few upstairs. Should be a pretty clean run so far. Is there one more? I think there's one more. I feel like there's one more. Yeah, we're still in danger, so it's got to be... Okay, down the stairs. All right, just check the beds just in case. Quick reload. There you are. And there you go. Let's go see our friend at Solomon's Pond. Now, this is still a shotgun. It's going to suffer from the same weaknesses that other ones do, that when we get enemies with more uh, damage resistance, it's going to uh, be harder to penetrate that armor. So here, let's get the headshots in. We're doing well. And you got to watch out here, because if you get too deep in the water, it puts your weapon away. So I'm going to rely on jumping to stay out of the water, and there we go. Was it the most efficient kill in the world? Probably not. Maybe with a little more focus, I could have taken him out in a few less shots, but who cares? It was fun. Let's see what happens at the Fisher site here. This should be good. We should see some jumping around fun action with the Scorched easy to get detected here. We're just going to stick with those headshots. We've got seemingly enough accuracy that uh, we can do that pretty efficiently. And they're definitely going down in one shot. We're doing enough damage for that with this weapon. Combat shotgun, not quite as much. Oh, level 100 survived the headshot. Okay. All right. So maybe not every time. Maybe I should double tap. And we're going to cripple a wing. We need to cripple a wing on the Scorch Beast to get him to the ground. Let's run over here and take out his one little minion left over. 
Oh, not quite there. Okay, there we go. Oh, you're crop dusting. I see the Scorch Beast crop dusting. We can avoid that. Get on that wing. There's a critical and it's crippled. All right, there we go. Now we're doing all right. Let's get the head. Ooh. And that needs to register these hits and so far so good. But now you're back in the air and not registering while you're flying. Okay, or at least while you're taking off. So there again, maybe that's an animation issue. Don't know. Either way, shouldn't be too much trouble. Oh, and he's already back on the ground. So you can see here that quad effect in action. Just pound that trigger, reload, tap that trigger again, reload one more time, heal up. And ah, we don't even need to reload. No, we did. Okay. Thought two shots would do the trick, but not quite. Either way, that was still pretty darn good, and it was fun. Head on over to Huntersville, see how we do against some super mutants, but we'll start off with the floaters. Four shots, not surprising. Uh, floaters are surprisingly tough for something that is just a, a balloon with gas in it, but, uh, you know, but they're tough. They've got some damage resistance. We'll just keep moving fast here. I'm really enjoying that aspect of this weapon. It's just a totally different play style for me, so if you already play like this, then this probably seems like nothing to you, but I'm so used to being sneaky and methodical that being able to just run around and just pop heads off without really a whole lot of concern for my own safety is fantastic. So we'd definitely be a little safer if we were running at full health. How about a torso shot? Okay. And if we need two shots anyway, then torsos might be the way to go here. But as we get adrenaline boosted up, that might be less of an issue. See if anybody comes running out for us and makes it easy. No. All right. Two shots to the head. Two shots to the head. And you're a little far away for a guaranteed hit. Let's just hit a stim pack. And you're dead. You're a little far away, but we got gotcha. you. And one shot down. There we go with the critical in there. All right, let's go ahead upstairs. Last two at uh, Super Mutant U Frat House. Easy enough. Bloody Mess is a great combo with this weapon. It just feels really good to just watch everything explode. It's fantastic. I really, really like this, and, you know, I think the uh, the less VATS AP cost is probably helping us a little bit here. Uh, bashing damage is, of course, doing nothing, because we're not bashing, and even if we were, it would be worthless. But I think we get the point. This thing is awesome. Let's talk conclusions. So the big question, as always, is, is this weapon good? And hell yes, this weapon's good. With this combination of mods and perks, we were able to get solid accuracy for VAT's headshots, really didn't need to rely on criticals at all, but if you want to, you certainly can, and then I guess you'd get a little extra mileage out of it, but overall, I just like how the weapon feels. It really encourages a totally different playstyle than what I'm used to. Run and gun, fast and loud, tons of action. I'm having a lot of fun running this one, and the quad effect is a big part of the reason why. Normally, with a double barrel shotgun, you need to reload after every second shot. That leaves you defenseless a lot more often. By reducing the number of reloads, you can really focus on just clearing out enemies instead of this process of get a kill, protect yourself, get another kill, protect yourself again. Instead, you can just run and jump around, popping off heads and watching your enemies crumble beneath you. What more could anyone ask for? I ran this one at low health for extra damage, really wanting to focus on getting those one-shot kills, and it absolutely worked. I'm not sure you'd have the same experience trying to run this at full health either. The extra damage from Adrenal Reaction was definitely important, but so was the improved VATS accuracy and increased AP that came from a full set of unyielding armor. Without those things, I think I would have needed to get closer to get shots on target and I think I would have needed to pull back and let my AP recharge from time to time instead of just imposing my will on the wasteland. That's not necessarily the end of the world, 
But what I really liked here was this kind of rapid fire play style. It wasn't really about the damage, so that's something to consider. And that, well, that's really all I've got to say about this one. I can't imagine any effect being more beneficial on this weapon than quad. Sure, others will give you more damage, but I still don't think you get as much bang for your buck as we did with this one. So that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed it and you want to see more, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. There's always a lot more to come on the channel, and I hope to see you next time. Till then, I'm Fisty McRib.